Okay, adding fuel to the fire. Prior to visiting Texas, the president was in the state of Colorado, where he shot some pool Tuesday night at a bar, originally founded by Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper. The president also drank some beer with the governor. But one offer was made to Mr. Obama in which he declined. A man off camera held up a marijuana joint and extended an invitation to the president, quote, you want to hit this, unquote? Listen closely. You want to hit this? <laughs> Colorado recently legalized recreational marijuana. Question, so why is the president of Obama so uptight about taking a friendly toke? Wasn't that rude, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he handled that pretty well, but I mean, look at I mean, the contrast between what's going on on the border and him with the pool cue and shooting pool yeah, and having a beer. Is legal, talking it's about, legal. I know it's legal, but he looks like he's relaxing and having a wonderful time. And then you go to this crisis on the border with these kids and, and people can absent. La Raza right. fighting the and and militia. He's absent without leave. He's a wall. It's also you know, Republican you politics. Mean, it's no, no, I don't mind if he does that, but he's, he has to show up at these kind of places. It's, al know. it's also Republican politics desperately trying to whip this up for November after their party looks like it's really rejecting the, the fastest growing voter block in this country. Uh, I don't think well, they're going to the, get many the, Hispanic votes the way, for the future. The, and Rick Perry wants to stamp out the, Ted, Ted Cruz in Texas. He gets man. hit if he mingles with the people. Right. He gets he, hit if yes. he doesn't mingle with the people. <laughs> what is it? What well, is it? I think the marijuana that he was offered was grown in the United States. <laughs> right. and, it may have and, actually been, and it may have been a good move for him to have accepted it because no. it is legal there. I, 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 I don't he could think so. Well. He may be promoting the economy. Here, let me put this. What, what he's promoting, what he's promoting the is saying, well, the issue is saying, is saying the that issue instead of whether the marijuana was grown in the United States <laughs> or grown right. in Mexico. Yeah. The issue is it's marijuana. If he's the of president America, of the United States about. does that, John, he's like kaput. He's, John, if he smoked that marijuana, there would not be a Democrat in America that would want him to come in and campaign for it. Exit question. Exit question. Is the border break down helping, hurting, or having no impact on President Obama's political standing. Pat Buchanan. I think it is really hurting him badly, and I'm sure the, the White House staff, in my guess, is tearing its hair out that he didn't call an audible and go down there to the border. Well, I think he probably should have gone to the border, but, this, but this, with the Senate, control of the Senate at stake, I don't think we know how this uh, issue is going to work. Republicans do not look accepting of Hispanics, and that's going to hurt them politically. Do you think it's going to be neutral? No, no, I, no I, side I, can I, claim? It's, it's going to flip one way or the other. Uh, right now, I think very little. I think there are, there are Latin American groups on the far left that don't like his uh, openness to changing the rules, which he suggested, but more importantly, John, this is uh, affecting Rick Perry more than it is Barack Obama. It's positively, given, positively, positively, negatively. Positively. Positively. It's given, it's given <coughs> the, the governor The plane has taken off, who, right, Pat? Who's head to head but with the President of the United States, which is where you want to be as a Republican. And, and who head won head in head. that battle? I this think Rick Perry is holding Rick his Perry? own. He's winning. Yeah, absolutely. The president? Well, look where Rick Perry uh, no, started, Rick, though. Rick he Perry outmaneuvered President Obama. I'm so talking about the, score one, the visible exchange way. that was just we just <laughs> had on television. Yeah. Rick, Perry, Rick Perry. Rick Perry for you. He fumbled all change. over himself in the in the public sphere three years ago. He's now using this to he's come riding. out. And he's right. Rick, Rick Perry look presidential to you? Yes, he is, and he's very shrewd and very, very capable, and he's not to be underestimated. I'm not saying I'm supporting him as a there candidate, you but there he's you absolutely have terrific. A star is born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't forget the McLaughlin Group has its own website, and you can watch this program earlier and earlier programs on the web at any time from anywhere in the world at McLaughlin.com. Could any be, anything be easier or more enriching? I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Issue two: more angst. For John Kerry. At the start of his tenure as Secretary of State, John Kerry made reinvigoration of the stalled peace talks between the State of Israel and the Palestinian Authority a top priority. Here's what Secretary Kerry said on July 30, 2013, one year ago. Quote, the parties have agreed here today that all of the final status issues, all of the core issues, and all other issues are all on the table for negotiation. And they are on the table with one simple goal, a view to ending the conflict, ending the claims. Our objective will be to achieve a final status agreement over the course of the next nine months, unquote. Well, that was then.
Here's the situation now. Fighting between the Palestinians and the Israelis has heated up since the murders of three Israeli teenagers, followed by the apparent reprisal murder of a Palestinian youth, said to have been burned to death. Hamas has now launched hundreds of rockets at Israel from the Gaza Strip. And Israel has retaliated with targeted strikes against Hamas militants. Question, are those peace talks now dead, Mark Zuckerberg? No, they're not, and they never will be dead. That doesn't mean that they're going to happen or successfully at this stage of the game because of all that's going on. But no, I don't believe they're dead because both parties at some point or another need it and at some point or another it will have a, the, the proper result. What's happening now, though, is one of the most serious uh, moments of clash between, uh, with particularly because Hamas has merged with Fatah, and that has changed the whole, uh, 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 the, the PLO, well, that's changed the whole role of uh, Mahmoud Abbas, okay? Because at that point, he is dealing with the terrorist co uh, component of the Palestinian movement, and, and that puts a whole different uh, character to it. Now, have, even having said that, I think there is going to be a chance for uh, some kind of a, a progress, not not a final solution. Uh -huh. It won't happen in the short run. But, but, uh, but Hamas is very Hamas, Hamas is very it? Hamas is very weak at this point. Okay, uh, they joined up with uh, the, the Palestinians, but they're broke. They had forty thousand employees. They had no money, uh -huh. and and the. The PLO is refusing to pay for it. The Palestinian Authority but is more, not going to pay for it. So they're being, in a sense, marginalized. So at some point, they were always going to be a factor there. And if, if uh, uh, Abu Mazen has a chance to pull off a deal now. But uh, look, let me, John, uh, the, the peace talks are dead for now. They're dead indefinitely. Bibi Netanyahu, who did not want to even give up Gaza, is not going to give up the West Bank. He may very well go back into Gaza. As for Hamas, they are not going to negotiate with the Israelis. I mean, the one thing they would do is sit there. They wanted a 10-year truce. And quite frankly, this, John, this is a bloody mess, and it's very difficult to see how not that you get back to peace talks, but how you get this to a truce and stop the fighting and stop the killing, because this could spread not only to the West Bank, but into the larger well, Arab the, world the, where the, Arabs are yeah, forced to respond. The immediate challenge is to de-escalate. I don't think either side wants a war. I don't think Hamas wants a war and is equipped to fight mm -hmm. it, and I don't think Israel wants it. But mm -hmm. neither of them know how to walk away, and the, the emotions, because these are kids who were murdered, is, uh, is really driving this. Give me a view on this. Where's the off-ramp right now? I mean, it's great to think that this could end, but everybody I've talked to in Israel who's watching it closely, including uh, representatives from the, the Israeli Defense Forces, will admit that uh, there's not a, a... What about the gurus, not, at, the gurus at the State solution. Department? The gurus at the State Department, where you operate. They have no leverage at this point, John. What do the, they think? The, Martin Indyk, who was uh, yeah. John, he declared the process dead at at, at at Aspen. When a couple of days ago? Very in the last week, basically. So, but but it's important, I think, to look at the facts here that th the way that the ceasefire in 2012 yeah. between Hamas and yeah. Israel was reached was through an inter interlocutor, which was Mohammed Morsi in Egypt of the Muslim Brotherhood, which yeah, who is now yeah. out of who is now out of power, now, and, yes, and the Sisi, government. The new president of Egypt is. A tremendous supporter of this, in part he because he's, have, he he's, yeah. he's influence over he Hamas. He's, into Hamas. He's blocked. He's blocked Hamas. Okay. He stopped a lot of what they do. He stopped so, their smuggling. Okay. He said, so he is has weakened Hamas dramatically. Exit question on a scale of one to ten, with ten being totally ruinous uh, and one being a recoverable disturbance. How much will these hostilities delay the peace talks, Pat Buchanan? They've killed him for the indefinite future. Five. Eight point two. A uh, four. A six. Issue three, when it feels right. When are you going to decide whether you're running for president? <laughs> you know, I'm going to decide uh, when it feels right for me to decide because... Still um, by the end of this year? Well, you know, certainly not before then. I just want to kind of get through this year, travel around the country, help in the midterm elections in the fall, and then take a deep breath. There are three Democratic women who might give Hillary a run for her money, and they are all liberals or quote-unquote progressives. Senator Elizabeth Warren, said to be a favorite of the Obama White House, Kirsten Gillibrand, who holds Hillary's old New York Senate seat, and Senator Amy Klobuchar, who has made several exploratory trips to Iowa. All three Democratic senators signed a letter to Hillary, pledging their support if she does definitively throw her hat in the ring. But a challenge to Hillary from the Democratic left 
would help her redefine herself as a political centrist, a shift that some say is already underway. Question, would Hillary Clinton be better off with a strong challenge in the Democratic primaries, or is she better off facing a field of lightweights that she can easily beat? Guy Taylor. I think that she would be better off facing uh, a challenger, but I got to tell you, John, she just looks like she's gaining steam and, and polish and, and all of the criticism that's been hurled at her when she was Secretary of State, it's still there, but it is not gaining steam. So it, Why it almost is arbitrary. Why do you think she would be better point. off? Well, because I think it would force the party to come together a little bit and hash out differences between the far left and the center. And then on the issue of foreign policy, I think uh, that Hillary Clinton uh, didn't really like the foreign policy of the Obama administration. If she had, she probably would have stayed a little How longer. How did that show itself? Uh, it showed well. It showed itself now in in this kind of tacit alignment she's making with people who are are on the right, particularly neocons. I think she would have wanted a a harder hitting, uh, more sort of nation building style. Do you, do you share policy. his opinion on that? I do, and in this sense, I think Hillary would benefit from having a good left wing progressive primary. Candidate. Give, give their ideology a jolly run in the yard and get them go out there and then let her bring them back into the camp for the general election. However, let me say one thing. I do believe that Hillary has suffered tremendously in the last month. Her book isn't, she, I mean, all this money she's got in the buck raking, 250000 for speeches at colleges. I think she is moving herself far away above and beyond the populist base of the Democratic Party, opening a vulnerability she there that could be filled <laughs> not by a woman. She will have Please. a populist message by the time those primaries uh, get underway. And I, I love all the three women you mentioned, uh, Warren, Klobuchar, Gillibrand, but that would be like fielding the Harlem Globetrotters against the NBA. It's just, you know, they're not going to run. They are all committed to, to Hillary. There will you be mean, some male candidates yeah. in the race, yeah. but the, the shoot 'em up will be on the Republican side. And all the history of primaries shows that if you don't have any serious primary opposition, that gives you a, a good head start for the yeah. fall. Let it, right. we'll, we'll have plenty to do watching the Republicans chew yeah. each other up. In your simile about the Globetrotters, uh huh. The Globetrotters is Hillary. No, no. The Globetrotters is the fake team that would get on the field. It's the Washington Generals. That's but right. the Globetrotters, right. the Globetrotters, oh, the Globetrotters sorry, always the win. All right. So Wash <laughs> I'm, now, you know, are you I'm confused? Not a, I'm not or, an aficionado. Or, 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 I mean it, the Washington yes. Generals. Is this, a, is, this <laughs> a is this a Freudian slip on your part? <laughs> no, it's just She's ignorant. It's yeah, ignorance of sports. Basketball. We finally. It was my favorite sport. It was the white guys that the Harlem Globetrotters used to beat every game. Right. Do you want to say something just to rescue her from any further interrogation? Have you ever seen Hillary play basketball? She's fantastic. Listen, let me just tell you something. I think Hillary's an outstanding candidate. I think she is overwhelmingly the choice of the Democratic Party. I think she's going to get through whatever the primaries are and be the Democratic Should nominee. Should she be primary so that people can see that? She will have plenty of exposure. She's already had plenty of exposure. She was, after all, not only Secretary of well, State, as we know. Listen, I, there's she, nothing this, like having a debate between uh, two candidates or multiple she, candidates in a primary. She you know have, what a primary she, is. She, I've read a lot about him. <laughs> right. She is definitely going to be as articulate if and you as were lucid advice, as I want anybody a, want can opinion be. From Buchanan. If you were giving advice to, Henry, uh, to Hillary, would you advise her to be primary or not to be yes. primary? I would go straight for the nomination myself. I don't, you right. would. Absolutely. You don't want to take any risk. Right. Right. Exactly. And <laughs> what so about you? It's not up to her either. I stick to what I said before. I think it's going to help the party come together yeah. in the post-Obama era. She definitely era. should be primary. It would cinch it for her. Cinch <laughs> it. Out of time. Bye-bye.